In this video, I'm talking about Rock and Roll by The Velvet Underground, who are, let's face it, basically the greatest band of all time. And despite being a huge fan, I think I've only looked at a couple of Velvet's tracks on this channel up to this point. So I thought it was about time that I looked at another one. And I've gone for Rock and Roll just because I was listening to it the other day. It's obviously a fantastic song, but I think there's a little bit more to it than you might imagine in terms of the guitar parts. And I've made some new discoveries, some new shit has come to light, as the dude might say. So I'm going to be sharing those discoveries with you today. But let me start by playing a bit of the song for you. <laughs> Now this song is from 1973 and appears on the fourth Velvet's album, Loaded. Um, this is not an original copy, this is just a reissue. I imagine if I did have a, an original copy it'd probably be worth quite a bit of money. And it's a great record, I mean all four of the proper Velvet Underground records are fantastic and each one has got a particular mood to it. And for me this one is quite a fun record, there's a lot of kind of quite poppy rock and roll tracks, it sounds like they're enjoying playing together and it's just quite a joyous sound so definitely worth checking out this record if you don't already know it. There are actually lots of different recordings of this track that you can hear. If you go on Spotify or on YouTube you can check most of them out there and it seems to have been a song that was around since the early days of the Velvet Underground. There's a 1969 live version that you can hear, there's a demo, there are various alternate mixes and edits and then lots of other live versions and Lou Reed seems to have kept it in his live sets for much of his solo career as well. So quite interesting to check all of those out though in this video I'm going to be focusing on the main studio recording that's on the loaded record. So let's get down to business. Let's begin by discussing the rhythm guitar parts and if you want to do this the easy way you can just bash it all out with quite simple bar chords and this is exactly what Lou Reed does in many of the live performances that I've seen. And we're in the key of C and he's just playing six string root C major bar chord down two frets to a B flat and then to an F you can play this as a fifth string root bar chord and then back to C again it's a very common chord progression you've got the one chord the flat seven the four and then back to the one so it's similar to Sympathy for the Devil or Hey Jude you hear this kind of chord progression all over the place and just playing it in this simple way kind of works pretty well. That's the verse section and the, the intro and then there's a little bridge section as well where it goes to the two chords so D minor, F, G, back to F and then we just got C to F so that's pretty much it for the rhythm guitar parts if you're going to play it in this straightforward bar chord kind of a way. 
but we're not going to play it that way today just because I don't think that's the way it's done on the original recording and by doing it with just the bar chords I think you lose a little bit of the vibe and the feeling of the original recording. Uh, it's quite a common thing actually for artists and bands to play things slightly differently live to how they did on the recording for whatever reason but in the case of this tune I think you're losing something so what we're going to do is get into a different tuning so a quick guitar change to the Martin and I've got this guitar in what I believe is the correct tuning for this song and I've not actually seen anybody else playing it this way I've certainly not seen any accurate tabs for this one so this is just my instinct and you can see what you think but the tuning I've got is essentially drop D tuning but everything is tuned down a whole step further from drop D so in terms of the notes we've got a low C then we've got a G another C and then an F an A and then a D so quite drastically tuned down there and we've got this great super low C droning away through a lot of the song I think that really is the secret to getting it sounding correct so once you're in the correct tuning the main rhythm guitar part goes like this This great low C droning away through most of that and we're starting off with this bar chord here it looks like a D major bar chord at the fifth fret but we're sounding as a C chord because we're tuned down so we're playing that and then we've just got some of these low C notes in between the chord accents so the basic rhythm is this to set up that rhythm I think and we're just squeezing down those chordal accents so it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four so we've got some syncopation there we've got the and of three and the and of four that are emphasized one and two and three and four so I think you want to start by just getting used to that rhythm part just on the one chord and then we can go into the actual chord progression so we've got and this is the first of several quite unusual sounding chords we're really just lifting up the third finger from that bar chord and we've just got the first finger flattened down across five strings here but again with that low C droning out uh, it's quite a jazzy sound it's really a I suppose it's a B flat over C kind of a sound, a C11 or C sus sound. So really quite an unusual sound for this kind of song. Then we're just moving that first finger up to the 12th fret. So we've got another chord played with just the single finger. Again, just that low note droning through there. So. that chord there um, I suppose that's you know, kind of the F chord maybe an F6 or even a kind of G sus sound it doesn't particularly matter what the name of this chord is I don't think but we've got this and then you're just putting down your third finger um, on the second third and fourth string so it's like a an A shaped bar chord at that point and playing it on an acoustic guitar is actually quite tricky just to squeeze your hand into that position there it's the body of the guitar here is getting in the way slightly for me it'd be easier on a guitar that's got a cutaway or where the neck meets the body slightly higher up but it's just about possible and I think on the original recording it is played on an acoustic guitar it does sound like it to me but would work equally well on an electric and actually be a little bit easier to play then we're back to the opening C chord again so we've got and notice how we're pushing into lots of those chord changes so changing to the new chord on the and of four one and 
two, three, and four, and. So that's the introduction. The verse is very similar. It's just the chord changes are coming slightly more quickly. So the technical word for this is the harmonic rhythm has changed. So for the introduction, we've got two bars on most of those chords. When Lou starts singing, we've mostly got one bar on each of those chords. So. So that's the introduction and the verse. Then we've got a little bridge section and that's quite straightforward. I'm hearing it as something like this. So the first part of that, I'm just changing the bass note. So I've got a bass note here at the second fret. 5th fret, 7th, back to the 5th. I'm muting the 5th string just by leaning into it and then the rest of the strings I've got as open. So that sounds quite close to the recording to me. You could thicken up those bass notes, maybe play a, a double stop. A triple stop. Uh, I'm just playing the single bass note and then having the rest of the strings, all strings one, two, three, and four open. And then for the it was all right bit, I'm going back to my C chord. And then to this chord here, so fifth fret bass note, and then the open strings. So those are the basic rhythm guitar parts, I think. Let's move on and take a look at the lead guitar parts. So I've switched to the Trent guitar now, which I've got in the same tuning as the acoustic. You could, if you wanted to, play most of these lead guitar parts in standard tuning, just moving everything down two frets. But I'm assuming that on the original recording that both the acoustic and the electric lead parts are down tuned. So that's how I'm doing it. Now, for the intro and for the verse parts, I'm just playing some simple triad based things. Now, I don't think you can really hear these on the original studio recording, but you can certainly hear these on some of the live recordings. And there's a 1969 live recording where you can hear, I'm assuming it's Sterling Morrison playing some nice triad based parts following the main chords that Lou is playing. So I'm, I'm doing it like this. I've got these little D shape triad shapes. So up here frets 14, 15, 14. Moving that down two frets. going to this minor chord shape here so it's just 12th fret on the top three strings that's really the top part of this chord that we had in the main rhythm parts and you could put the third finger down at the 14th fret and go back from the 12 14 to 12 if you wanted to so that's a nice simple triad based part which works perfectly with the main rhythm part. And then for the bridge part, I was just playing the same part as the main rhythm part. So just the, the bass notes and open strings. back to the triads. And 
there's a great little solo as well and I've not learned this absolutely note for note I've got the gist of it but I will tab it out as accurately as I can I'll put that up on my patreon page for those of you who are interested but the basic idea goes like this and I'm not even sure exactly who played this maybe it was Sterling Morrison it might have been Doug Yule who I know played a lot of guitar on the loaded record but it's quite a simple solo played mainly using the major pentatonic scale so we're in the key of C, you remember, but we're detuned, so the, the scale pattern is this one. So it's looking like a D major pentatonic, but it's sounding as a C major pentatonic. And the solo starts off like this. So just simple pentatonic bass stuff. Got some bends at the 17th fret on the top two strings. goes into this kind of very common classic rock kind of phrase and then the solo just ends with some more bending at the 17th fret on the B So that's loosely how the solo goes and then we've just got a couple of other lead guitar breaks that are a bit more melodic and I'm not exactly sure how these would have been done. They sound double tracked to me. One of the guitars may well be played with a slide and the other is a regular guitar. Almost sounds a bit vocal to me as well so maybe there's some kind of weird vocalising effect in there too. But the first one is played over the verse chords or the intro chords I think and the melody is this. something like that you can play that all along the length of the third string if you wanted to get a slide on and do that that would sound cool too and then the second little melodic break which comes after the main solo I think you could play that on the second string it's kind of a third above the initial guitar break so So quite straightforward but nice and catchy and melodic. And I almost forgot to show you one of my favourite parts of the whole song which is the lead guitar lick that you can hear in the breakdown section. Which is a fantastic lick and as I said maybe played by Sterling Morrison, could well be played by Doug Yule I think and possibly played in standard tuning. I think some of the lead guitar parts and overdubs might be done in standard tuning. But uh, since I'm already detuned, I'm going to play it that way. If you wanted to, you could play it in standard tuning, two frets lower. But it's all based on the major pentatonic scale. And if you want to think in caged terms, we're starting off in kind of the G form, I suppose. And the lick starts like this. Just a hammer on. And then the root note. And we're sliding up into the next position. And then we've got some licks played out of this little box shape here. Now over onto the top string. And we've got one note here which doesn't belong to the major pentatonic scale, this note at the 13th fret. But that's actually the minor third, so that's giving the whole lick a bit of a bluesy quality. And then we're just coming down the scale. So the whole lick slowly. And a bit faster. Let me give you a quick rundown of the gear that I'm using today for the acoustic parts. I'm using my Martin 0015M. I've got that down tuned. It does sound great in this deep tuning and I've still got these really old strings on it. And though I like the sound of old strings on acoustic guitars, these are definitely 
overdue for a change so I'll try and sort that out before my next acoustic video and then for the electric parts I'm using my Trent Model 1 and I recently did a full length demo video on this guitar so if you're interested in finding out a bit more about this guitar then check out that video. Amp I'm using today is my Vox AC30 and I'm using an overdrive pedal as well that's the J Rocket Archer. That's it for this video I will be tabbing some of this stuff out and I'll put that up on my Patreon page for those of you who are interested and the other Velvet song I've looked at on this channel is Pale Blue Eyes. I did a two-part lesson on that quite a while back. So you might want to check that out if you've not already seen it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.